Welcome to Seaside Kingdom, a kingdom often regarded as a bit of a break kingdom to any percent, a bit of a rest if you will, of which I don't really agree with as there's many opportunities for optimization within this kingdom, but I digress. Seaside Kingdom does have some annoying fish movement though, and some annoying Mario movement. So let's explain it and let's go through it, shall we? After you've skipped through all the usual cappy text, Odyssey cutscenes, etc, etc, you know the gist by now. Before you can even see Mario, hold down on the analog stick and jump and dive. And we're going to jump forward and ground pound in place. At the peak of Mario's ground pound, we're going to cap dive forward, wall jump off the wall, and cap dive back onto the platform up top. If you can, try your best to avoid the Goomba, as similarly to the chest that we went over in Night Metro Kingdom, interacting with a Goomba here while trying to dive can result in a dropped input, and we don't want that. That's annoying. But once you're back on top, jump onto this platform over here on the side and ground pound off of it, and then similarly, at the peak of Mario's jump, cap dive forward, cap stall against the wall, then we'll jump off of it, and then cap dive back towards the platform to grab the moon. A lot of people tend to have a trouble with this jump as it is quite daunting. You are making quite the vertical ascension, but it really all just comes down to making sure that you cap dive at the very peak of Mario's ground pound or backflip or whatever you choose to do here. It really isn't super tight if you are consciously aware of the fact that you have to be at the very, very peak. It honestly becomes a cakewalk once you do that. So with that in mind, go ahead, give it another go, and I'm sure you'll get it. I believe in you. But then after grabbing the moon, throw Cappy down towards the bottom left on your analog stick and ground pound and roll boost off the edge. Curve your way over towards this pipe and run towards it. Once you're inside, jump and dive towards the right, making sure to move a little bit up if you can, and then ground pound the spot to grab the rumble room moon. Then once you've got that moon, just cap throw towards the left and roll boost out the pipe. After you come out of the pipe, jump and cap throw and dive towards the top right and dive onto the raised platform section. Then turn the camera towards the left and curve Mario around so that you're right in front of this watered section, ground pound at the edge of the water, then cap dive forward. We'll jump off the back wall, then cap throw and dive towards the right, jump, cap dive, neutral bounce, and make your way into the moon. Because of the nature of this 2.5D section, if you will, chances are you probably aren't lined up perfectly with the moon most of the time. So you'll either just have to move a little bit forward or a little bit backwards to just nudge your way into it. It shouldn't be all too difficult. If you do fall here though, a very quick and easy backup that works basically every single time is line yourself up with the moon, get as close to the wall that is as close to the camera as you can, face away from it so you're facing the back wall, backflip at the peak of Mario's backflip, cap dive forward, wall jump off the wall, and simply dive. And you should run into the moon 100% of the time. But anyway, with that out of the way, after you've grabbed the moon, fall a little bit, and then cap dive and dive towards the left, and simply fall over the edge, and then while aiming towards the down left, once you've cleared the roof section here, simply dive out and begin roll boosting. Then as you're approaching the edge of the water, once Mario is basically lined up with where the water meets the sand, if you will, you can stop rolling and begin a triple jump. Make sure to utilize some short hops here so you don't go too far forward because the water gets a little bit too deep by the edge of the flooring that you're on and you will actually lose all of your momentum if you try and jump off of it. So triple jump over the edge and then dive into the water, making sure to go neutral on your left analog stick so Mario just instantly starts sinking. Then throw out Cappy and home into the fish. Then once you've grabbed it, begin swimming forward, avoiding the cheap cheeps keeping close to any walls, and then turn this corner here and shake to grab the moon in the chest. Then come out and turn the corner and head towards this secret area here. Follow it along, grab the moon inside and continue on forward. And then as soon as you come out, head up and towards the left and then shake this glowing spot here on the floor to activate the moon. Then swim up slightly and shake to grab it. Once grabbed, begin swimming forward and swim up and grab the moon underneath Dory. Then once you've grabbed that, continue swimming forward Shake this first glowing mound, swim forward and shake on the second one, and then once again for the third one, and then swim to the middle and shake the middle to activate the Northern Reaches moon, then swim up and shake to grab that moon as well, and then we're going to do fish clip. This looks intimidating, and I imagine if you're just learning Odyssey for the first time, you're probably like, whoa, 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 Tom, I don't want to do any of these crazy clips, who do you think I am, Tyrone Pasta Man Extreme? But trust me, this is quite honestly the easiest clip in the entire game. And really anybody can do this after like five seconds of instructions and like two seconds of practice. It's simple. What you're going to do is swim forward and get as close to the floor as you can. And then in this little dip in the edge of the world in front of you, you're going to dash forward as the fish and dig the fish down into that gap. 
You can do this by just swimming down, right? You're like dashing and swimming down into this gap. Then you're uncapturing the fish. You're gonna head backwards as Mario just a little bit. Throw Cappy towards the fish while continuing to swim back if you can, just to be safe. And then home into the fish to capture it again. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna once again swim and dash forward and down. And really just like that, you've clipped. It's that simple. It's not difficult at all. Might just take a little bit of practice to get used to the timings of things and the distance away from the wall. As if you try and capture the fish a little bit too close, what will end up happening is you'll get kicked backwards. The world will push you away as it normally does. So if it does that, just head a little bit further out as Mario and really you'll, you'll get accustomed to it. It's not all that difficult. Then swim towards the left and down at the same time, making sure to do a little zigzag pattern if you can, as we want to get as close to a diagonal line as we can, as that's the most optimal way to get towards this moon. But basically, once you're close to the wall of the moon, you just want to swim straight down so you can swim past it. And then as you go past the moon, shake so that you can grab the moon while out of bounds. And so the game doesn't force you back in bounds. As if you get too close to the wall, the game will do that. So be aware of that. Don't do that. Then continue to swim down. And then once you're under the floor, begin swimming forward and swim into the loading zone in front of these stairs. Then once you're in this hidden room, try out Cappy before you can even really see Mario. And then once Cappy is at the maximum distance that he can extend to, shake to home in on the chest to activate the moon and then swim up and then dive or dash or i don't know swim forward i guess i don't know what to call that into the moon to grab it and then after that we just walk back to the odyssey and we're out of here so seaside kingdom is another one of those kingdoms where we pretty much have to show you how to improve the entire kingdom sort of similar to how we went through metro kingdom and that's just because every piece of movement in the seaside has a better option than what we show off in the beginner section but that doesn't necessarily mean it's all that much difficult it's really just about doing more optimal movement and taking better lines and such so let's just dig right in After you've grabbed this first moon, instead of throwing out Cappy and ground pounding, we're instead gonna spin pound towards the bottom left and then curve around and roll into the pipe as per usual. And of course, we're gonna incorporate a spin pound in this room instead of a ground pound to save just a little bit more time. The way to ensure that we end up in the right spot here for the spin pound and the way that I learned how to do this is after you dive, you basically want to start buffering your spin pound as Mario is rolling. And once you see that Mario is rolling, then you can let go of your trigger button and you should pretty much just land in the exact spot that you need to activate the moon. Just making sure that you're letting that roll happen first. Otherwise, you'll kind of just spin pound in place once you land, which is obviously quite a bit away from where you need to be. Then after we come out, jump up and cap throw and dive towards the platform and then instantly dive up top and roll boost straight away. Then curve around just like before, jump and cap dive, do all the usual stuff. But then once we're up here, instead what we're going to do is long jump, throw out Cappy and cap dive onto Cappy to just land into the moon. So overall, this is just some improved movement, some faster inputs and getting into that moon just a little bit faster. Then after we grab that moon, we've got a long piece of movement here, but similarly before, exit the cave. And then once you're at the edge of the water, we do a triple jump, land into the water while still holding forward, and then basically just instantly let go of your left analog stick. So you go neutral and Mario begins sinking and then throw out Cappy towards the fish and capture it straight away. Then make your way over to the chest. Then 
You'll notice that we're cutting corners really tight here. Seaside as a kingdom, a lot of its time save really comes down to very optimal fish movement, which means that we need to take direct straight lines and we need to be cutting corners as tight as we can. This might seem like it doesn't add up to all that much time, but trust me, a large, large chunk of Seaside time save comes from optimal fish movement because most of the time in Seaside, you are a fish. So that's just how it's going to work. You might as well start getting comfortable with it while you can. And then just cutting that corner to the chest as soon as you can to activate that moon straight away. And then you can throw in a sneaky little boost back towards the camera as you grab the moon. I liked to do that while I was doing any percent. I do enjoy that Tyro threw that in there. Then our next chunk of movement here is of course directly after that. It's really all just about taking optimal lines and cutting corners as tight as we can. There's nothing really else I can say about it. You'll also notice here at the end, Tyrone makes sure to get up towards the roof of the tunnel so that he can get closer to where he needs to go as he comes out. Then for our last piece of movement, of course, it really is just mostly the same stuff. It's all just about taking tighter lines, cutting corners earlier, doing things in the least amount of arcs possible and whatnot. There really isn't a whole lot more else I can say. If you want a rundown of movement by movement, input by input, I do recommend checking out my Improve Your Seaside Kingdom video, as while that does go over a few more advanced things in it that we aren't showing off here, the majority of it is really exactly this clip that Tyrone has showed off, and there's probably no harm in you taking a look at Seaside, as it's not all that difficult even at a top level. Well, okay, I shouldn't say difficult. It's not all that involved even at a top level, so there is probably a lot you could learn out of the input by input input of that video. But with that gamers, we're at a seaside kingdom, and only danger awaits us in the next kingdom. If you haven't already, make sure to check out Tyrone's social links that are all down below, as well as any of my own, and any other links we chuck down there to help you in your Super Mario Odyssey speedrunning adventure. I'll see you in our next really, really annoying kingdom.